originally we, we had many more doors and elevators the player had to use Wheatley to unlock. And as we tested that, um, we found that uh, players got, they got really tired of doing that. They got frustrated. Oh, I've got to use them again. I'm going to And uh, uh, every, every time the player could hold and lock and unlock Wheatley was an opportunity where they could drop him or throw him or try to throw him on the catwalk. And, and uh, so we decided to just cut down on the numbers of, of times players had to, um, to, to fill with that. So most of the time, we, we just, just traveled on the trail. So after all of this, this testing and getting feedback from uh, with, within the team and, and uh, figuring out some, some design ideas, um, uh, Wheatley was, was modeled and rigged. Uh, it went together pretty pretty quickly. Um, it was a bit tricky figuring out how to make his eyelids work. A lot of the mechanics are actually pretty pretty believable with how he's put together. But uh, if his eyelids had been totally rigid shells, when, when his eyelids opened, they would um, uh, they were going to noticeably penetrate other other parts of his geometry. So uh, and this was a multi discipline cabal. So the uh, uh, modeler and rigger turns to the programmer next to him and says, hey, can you, can you write a script just to, to collapse the geometry of, of uh, Wheatley's eyelids when, when he opens his eyes? And did that, and so that's, that's how Wheatley's eyelids open. Just the, the, the mesh just, just shrinks a bit, and it works beautifully. Um, and uh, uh, in, in fact, Wheatley was modeled and rigged once. No changes. It, it worked perfectly, just all that all that testing, all that communicating, and, and uh, uh, all that, that planning, all that iterating with, with uh, little, little temporary play blasts and, and things paid off. Uh, and um, uh, he, was, he was a very, very successful uh, character. Um, um, and he, uh, even though he, he had uh, very, very few controls, just uh, with the way that they could be combined and the way all that that planning that happened beforehand um, got a, a lot of variety of expression out of him just from combining all those those different controls. Uh, for instance, he, he had uh, some acting language uh, with his the size of his, his, his pupils that could show whether uh, he was he was relaxed or a little bit concerned or scared out of his mind. Um, his uh, his handles uh, uh, just. By, by being in different poses, could imitate the movements that humans do um, to, uh, for, for expressions and uh, um, uh, movements that, that humans do with the brows and cheeks that accompany their talking. So even even Wheatley has no mouth, and he talks nonstop. And so having having uh, these you know brow brow and cheek stand-ins really really helped give give the, the illusion that that voice was coming from him. And uh, uh, more, more subtle things like uh, uh, the, the, the language of his eye contact and head hook. I'm sure I can get into a lot more detail about this. But uh, uh, just, just simple things about uh, uh, whether he's focused at you straight on, or he's looking at you but his eyes start darting away, or his head is turned away but his eyes start darting to, to you. So just say a lot of subconscious things about uh, uh, what, what, he's, what he's thinking and, and feeling. These, these add up again to... Uh, uh, to, to tell that he's, he's, got, he's got a brain and got the motivation. And of course, uh, uh, having those, those big eyelids uh, were very, very expressive. The low, lower eyelid could come up to help with, with a, a hint of, of cheeks that could uh, work with uh, um, sometimes when he's supposed to be uh, uh, smiling or, or trying to, to appease you. It was all, it was all very, very effective. And uh, also a lot of what it went into uh, designing his, his, his acting was inspired by hand puppets, mm -hmm. um, uh, which, of course, then are inspired by human head movements and, and, and body movements. There's, there's a way that uh, uh, movements for, for, for hand puppets are, are just stylized versions of, of what, what humans do. And um, uh, uh, so, and... And some hand, hand puppets don't even have facial movements, so there's a lot expressed by just how how the uh, the head of the puppet is is, is tilted and the, uh, uh, the 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 speed of, of movements and how fast and, and slow things are, or, or the, the 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 amount that 
they're moving. So um, all of these uh, these ideas about stylizing movement that uh, uh, that uh, have, have similar signals to uh, uh, what humans do with with their with their heads and with with, with their faces that that all went into figuring out the, uh, an acting language for for Weekly. Uh, and, and also with, with, with puppets, uh, what, what you're doing is you, you've got kind of a, a repeatable library of little bits and pieces of, of, of movements and poses and timing, and your brain is kind of a game engine that's accessing this in, in, in real time because the puppet's being performed in real time. So it's, it's not an infinite library, it's just kind of a certain set of repeatable things that, that you just keep putting together in different combinations. And so... Um, that was kind of an inspiration for how the uh, animation library needed to be established for Wheatley. Um, uh, <laughs> he, had, uh, he had different requirements for uh, different types of animation depending on uh, whether he was being carried or whether he was on his rail. In those situations, his body could be loose and, and move around. Uh, if he was plugged in, the way the, the plug worked is he grabbed his handles and and held him in, in place, and so the um, uh, outer part of his body couldn't move, his, his, uh, his handles couldn't move. So uh, similar ways had to be found just using the inner shells of his, of his body to uh, uh, express certain, certain emotions. And uh, for, for some of the time he was damaged, so there were certain animations that worked with that. Um, because there was, there was limited time to do custom animations for, for all of his dialogue. Um, his, uh, his vocals weren't recorded until very close to the end of the game because so much of the, the details of the writing of the story uh, and, and the dialogue weren't really finalized until close to the end. And we knew this was going to, uh, to, to happen. So um, um, we, we, we knew we just had to, to uh, work, work towards that plan rather than think, oh, the, the vocals aren't going to be ready until near the end, so we have to suddenly throw... 20 animators of this guy. Uh, and instead, just very early on, once the model was, was ready and, and was being dropped into the beginning for testing, just started working on uh, a library of uh, different kinds of animations that could be layered to, together um, so that they could be uh, ready to go once, once we had the, the vocals. And I'll show you some of these things. Uh, some of these uh, different layers and elements that were, that were uh, went into uh, kind of the, the recipe of, of making these acting. So just starting out, there was just a very neutral eye that had little micro movements of his eyes, his body parts, and his brows, just keeping it alive. And once that was established, um, then just just the uh, the range of animation of his, um, uh, his his brows and eyelids could just be adjusted um, to put him into different moves or locked off if he was plugged in. Um, uh, again, so much of this was really based on just a few initial idols or glances, which was like an idol that looked around the environment, and uh, just just adjusting uh, the, the pupil constriction, the eyelids. This one was a bit too too crazy. We couldn't really. Uh, apply this to, to anything that, that, that Wheatley did. So there was some experimentation with that, but mainly came up with uh, a lot of things that we ended up with. 